Hello and welcome to this video and this video is going to be called 10 Killer Jazz Fusion Albums from the 90s. So, um, there's a ton of great fusion from the 90s. We haven't talked about the 90s that much on this channel. And also, I really wanted to get into talking about a few artists that we really haven't covered. So, of course, there's some fantastic Pat Metheny albums and John McGoughlin albums all from the 1990s, but I won't be talking about them. I'm going to be talking about some different stuff, but these, these are 10 albums I absolutely love. So let's just kick off with the first album from the 90s I think you need to go and check out. This is a really obvious choice, and, and that would be Illicit by Tribal Tech. So Tribal Tech is the band formed by the, the incredible Scott Enson on guitar and the equally incredible Gary Willis on bass, with the Kirk Covington on drums on this, and Scott Kinsey on keyboards. Um, the uh, Tribal Tech really, you know, kept burning fusion alive during the 80s. And I think the band just went from strength to strength as they, as they went on. They really, um, you know, pioneered a sound that was somewhere between uh, Hendrix and Weather Report. And I love both of those. Um, I really think that Scott Henderson is one of the great jazz fusion guitarists. I haven't spoken about him enough on this channel and I really wanted to just talk about him again. He seems to just personify what makes jazz fusion great, which is a, is a real, you know, marrying of those two styles. Um, I once remember watching a video with uh, Scott Henderson where he said that he would rather listen to Albert Collins drop his guitar on the floor than listen to someone just playing 16th bebop jazz notes in a row, you know. And that's what really comes across with Scott Anderson. He's got an incredible understanding of the blues. And on this album, they really do tear it up. And uh, tracks like The Big Wave and Talk, absolutely fantastic. And of course, The, the Big Wave, that opening track on this album, really... Um, plays into that fear of all that all us jazz fusion fans have. When we go out and buy a fusion album and then we realise that we have bought a dud, that it's just some Fusaki middle of the road, you know, Kenny G type of thing. And that track starts off with this very polite jazz fusion. And then just as you are thinking, oh my God, what have I bought? It kicks into some really burning fusion. There's some great improvisations on here. I, 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 this is, I think this is my favourite Tribal Tech album, which while why I pulled it out from I think 1992. So there's a fantastic album. So we've kicked us off, but I haven't finished with um, Scott Henderson. And uh, I'm now gonna give you two albums, right? That I think you should both go and check out. Um, I couldn't pick between which one to have. So the band is Vital Tech Tones. Okay, here, they, here with a bite of Vital Tech Tones. This, no, that one is the first album. And this one's the second album. The difference between them, this, this one's a little bit showboaty. So if you really want to hear some virtuosity and in some insane stuff, check this one. This one composition is a little bit stronger. They're both the same, but they're just, that's, that's the difference. They're, there's some really great compositions on here. This one's a little bit showboaty. By, by showboaty, I mean, they do a lot more solos, actual solo spots on here. And they do, um, a, a version of Giant Steps, which you think Giant Steps is hard, but they just fill it with loads of odd time signatures, and it's really insane. Um, I've spoken about Scott Anderson, incredible guitarist. Victor Wharton, haven't really spoken him about him at all. Got a little bit of mention in the video I did with Mark Hartley on the five great jazz bass players. You know, Vic, Victor Wharton rewrote the book on bass in the 90s, and if you want to check Victor Wharton out and you haven't got any, Go for these. In fact, go for, oh God, I can never do this. Go for that one there first and then this one. Vital Tech Tones. This was on the uh, Tone Center label. The Tone Center label brought out some really great fiery fusion, a little bit derivative, but some great fiery stuff. Another album I absolutely love that's on that label is this one, um, which is by Frank Gambali, Stuart Ham, and Steve Smith. I brought this out because we spoke about this on the bass video I did with Mark as well. I, I absolutely love Steve Smith, incredible drummer, um, but I really wanted to just mention Frank Gambali as well. You know, we've discussed a lot of guitarists, but I don't feel like Gambali uh, and uh, Scott Henderson have got enough 
discussion on here. So I'm, I'm really, you know, putting in my support from Frank Gambale. I think Frank Gambale is, is really not valued. Um, but for some reason, this guy that I feel is playing on a similar level to an Alan Holdsworth or a John McGoughlin that has created new techni techniques on the guitar, who's, who is so um, incredible uh, in his unique approach guitar, which has really reshaped guitar playing, doesn't get his dues. His work in the Chick Corea Electric Band is should have you know made him have a legendary status and i know everybody knows him but i just don't think he gets the respect really now i think part of this comes from his compositions gambal is an incredible guitarist but especially on his early solo albums i always felt that the compositions were were less than fiery they they were verging a little bit towards the muzak side the fusak side of things but if you want to hear Gambale absolutely burning, it's on here. Now the reason I think is, is because there's no keyboards on here. Um, and because there's no keyboards, there's a lot more freedom. And also Gambale has to fill up a space where the keyboards are. I think a lot of the times with Gambale's compositions, you tend to get like the, the chords on the keyboards and then him playing the melody. But here you get a much more of a Hendrix power trio approach. There's a few other Gambale albums that are really incredible. We won't go into them here. I'm sure people will put them in the comments. But here's a shout out for um, Frank Gambale and this band. I don't know if it actually had a name, this band. But the album's called Show Me What You Can Do. Incredible album. Right. If you love burning guitar, here's an album. Now we're going to get a little bit more obscure now, which is what you're here for. Right. And they get a little bit more obscure. This is an album by Warren Cucurullo, and it's called Thanks to Frank. Um, the lineup on here, well, I know it's Warren Cucurullo on guitar, Vinnie Colliuta on drums. This is one of the great Vinnie performances as well. There's some burning Vinnie drummings. On, on bass, I'm pretty sure that this is what happens when you get older and you can't read the, um, the liner notes, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, oh, I just cannot see it. Yeah, I think it's Nick Beggs and Pino Palladino. Nick Beggs, of course, is a great now the great progressive rock guitarist who started in in pop with Kajagoogoo. He's he, he did a reverse Phil Collins, <laughs> um, and of course Pino Palladino is one of the great bass players of all time. But I really want to I really want to give a shout out to Frank, um, not to Frank Gambale, to Warren Cucurullo on this. He's such an incredible guitarist, and, and there's very few albums you can check out where he really does his thing, but he does it on here. Again, Power Trio. Of, of course, um, Warren Kukuru came out of the Zappa band, and from there he went on to Missing Persons with Terry Bozio, and then went into Duran Duran. Um, but this is a burning fusion album. It's more on the rock side than it is jazz, but it's definitely a burning fusion album, and as I said, Vinny is just absolutely unbelievable on this so that's that album there we're rattling through them don't want to spend too long in each one because i just want to give you some recommendations if you don't know these albums please go and check them out i'm about to show you what i think is one of the greatest jazz fusion albums of the 90s and an absolutely stonking jazz fusion album that uh, um i can't recommend um too highly it's lunar crush by Dave Fizinski and John Medeski, right? So of course, John Medeski is the organ player with Medeski Martin and Wood, great group. Um, they're great, um, I've got a few of their albums, but I like him more on here, uh, because this is a lot more avant-garde, out there fusion. It's got a, a, a little bit of an m bass edge to it, and of course, the, the incredible Dave Fizinski. Dave Fizitsky is another guitarist that we need to mention. I think his approach is absolutely unique on guitar. Nowadays, he's really exploring microtones. He's really gone down that avenue. And you can hear it a little bit here, but he's doing it more with the tremolo arm. He's an incredible, guitar incredible guitarist. Um, he's cropped up more recently in uh, Hiromi's group. Now, Hiromi deserves her own video i think at the moment at this moment in time hiromi is one of the great jazz fusion musicians on the planet one of the greatest in fact but this is different this is this is really coming out of that sort of new york jazz scene that was 
that actually was behind artists like Michel Endeg Endegacello. If you like Michel Endegacello and you want to hear what those musicians sound like when they just go nuts, this is the album for you. Like a bit like Screaming Headless Torso is another group we haven't mentioned. So this video is really me just throwing a whole ton of different artists at that we haven't discussed basically. And that's why I'm rattling through. This is like all this is out there for us to discuss. Right, you want to get even darker, you want to even get even heavier on the guitar fusion side, then you need this guy, Casper Broetzman and his band Massacre. Right, now this is going towards avant-garde free jazz, but if you want to hear free jazz, but with that pinch of cream and um, Jimi Hendrix, then this is the album for you. This is something else. Um, I, I, I don't know whether we could call this jazz fusion, I would, because this is like Jimi Hendrix doing free jazz, Coltrane, that's what it's like. Casper Broetzman, of course, is the son of Peter Broetzman, um, the incredible free jazz saxophone player. Free jazz hangs over this channel the whole time, it's there in the background the whole time and I keep wanting to go towards it and I keep thinking, how can I do a, a video on Machine Gun? Machine Gun was an album made, made by this guy's dad in 1968 and he's perhaps the most far out unlistenable free jazz album of all time. Um, an album that will stop metalers in their tracks because it's the heaviest thing that's ever been recorded. Casper um, Broetzman, he takes the influences to his dad but he shoots it through someone who's grown up with rock music and I, it's, it's a really interesting um mixture. I do really really like this album and I find myself coming back to it over and over again. It is very free, it is very out there but in a way it's also quite listenable for an album that's so out there. So yeah, Casper Broetzman Massacre, right. All right, this album, the ne this, this next one, which is actually number seven on the list so we're nearly there but I'm going to talk a little bit at length of the last two. Um, this album's actually a double album and it allows me to discuss two other guitarists. Now I've <laughs> Now I'm here, I realise what I've done here is actually bring up a whole bunch of guitarists that I haven't mentioned before and thrown them in the mix. But this is an album called Two Doors. It's a double album by Michael Shreve. And it's actually two albums together. It's Deep Umbra, which is an album he made with a quartet with um, Jonas Helborg and Sean Lane. And there's an, another album on here called Flying Polly, which is um, like an organ trio group he did with Bill Frizzell. Bill Frizzell is another guitarist, absolutely so important to Jazz Fusion. I have talked a little bit about it when I covered the Fluid Russell album by Ebert Hard Weber, which is one of my favourite albums. Um, Mike Shreve, of course, from Santana. Uh, great fusion drummer, and I feel that his name on these albums has allowed guitarists like Bill Frizzell and Sean Lane to just let loose a little bit more. Um, so let's get on to Sean Lane, the late great Sean Lane, who has gone down in, in history as one of the great guitarists, although not known. Sean Lane sort of emerges out of that whole guitar scene in the 80s, you know, the Steve I, Joe Satriani, Jason Becker, Paul Gilbert thing. But Sean Lane's doing something else for a start. What he's doing technically is further out than any of those guys. He, he set a standard for speed and brutality and fieriness. Um, but he was also a very, very good composer. I do think Sean's a very good composer, but his actual compositions, and I was never been a fan of Sean Lane's compositions, except on here. And I think the reason is, is because he's got a great trio here, and it's a trio that he played with um, a lot. He had the, you know, Jonas Helborg and Jeff Seip on drums on a lot of his. But I think just having Mike, Mike Shreve's name there and perhaps a, a slightly better studio and a bit more time to do it, I think he, he brings in one of his finest performances. So if you don't know Sean Lane and you really want to go and check him out on a Fusion album, try Deep Umbra by Michael Shreve, which you may be able to get on this double album with Bill Frizzell. Right, so... I've left myself five minutes on this video to talk about an artist that um, I absolutely love. And he, this is one of my favourite albums by him. And I really think that this is a Fusion album. And if you're a Fusion fan, you've got to check it out. And that is Courtney Pine, Modern Jazz Stories. 
So Courtney here is really playing in a sort of Coltrane quartet style and really in that area. But he's also, he's pulling in loads of influences from hip hop. And in fact, influences from fusion. That's a really odd thing to say. But at one point, we get a John McGoughlin sample. It's an actual sample of Desert Song off the Stanley Clark album, uh, the guitar riff from that. Uh, and they basically pull that in like a sample in the way that hip hop artists do. He's, 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 he's playing on here with like a Coltrane quartet, but he's also got a turntablist. Um, a lot of artists in the 90s were trying to mix hip hop and, um, and jazz to greater and lesser extents. I think this is one of the greatest examples of how to do it right. And this album absolutely burns. Courtney Pine is without doubt one of my favorite saxophone players and one of the great saxophone players in the world, technically, to my ears, okay? Um, I got into Courtney Pine in the 80s um, when he made his first album, and his first album blew me away. And I went, um, eventually got to see him around about 88, 89, and on that gig, he had the uh, incredible drummer, um, Mark Mondesia, playing. Mark Mondesia really changed my thinking about drums. Um, I, I had been into fusion, Weckle and Update, you know, Vinnie and Billy Cobman and all that. And I'd also been into jazz and I was listening to lots of Coltrane and Miles Davis. But the sort of, that hip, fiery way of playing fusion that almost towards the heavy metal end as well, uh, Mark was doing um, in that group and he was doing it in a way which didn't compromise the improvisation and that really influenced me uh, and after that, that I then started following Mark around if he ever played anywhere uh, near where I lived I went to see him and um, he had an incredible trio um, in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, with his brother, Michael Mondesi on bass, which for me was as close as I got to see the Mavish Nuxia. You could tell that these guys were just dripping with um, influences from all the same stuff I love, you know, not a Michael Walden, Mavish Nuxia, Weather Report, but especially Billy Cobham and Yana Hammer and all that type of thing. So I used to go and see him whenever I could. Um, a few years later, when I was endorsed to Zildjian, I managed to um, catch up with Mark. Uh, and uh, it was great because I went up and tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around, he had some headphones in and he pulled them out and it was, uh, he was listening to Apocalypse. So then we had a lovely conversation uh, about Narada Michael Walden. Now, uh, this channel has not only brought the attention of Narada Michael Walden, who's actually got in touch with me uh, and said he loves the videos that we've been doing, but also Mark's got in touch, which is an incredible thing. And I and I'm just wanted to mention that that uh, this channel is now getting noticed by the very people that we're talking about, and that's an incredible thing. How music connects us all. So my last album I'm going to pull up, and there's many, but I thought I'd pull up this one by Julian Joseph. Okay, it's called Universal Traveller. It features Mark Mondesia on drums and it's some beautiful jazz trio playing and you get to hear Mark um, in that area between straight swinging jazz and fusion. And of course Mark can do the lot, you know, he, he really can go all the way over to funk, soul, pop, right, if he wants and all the way over to swinging as hard as anybody on the planet and I think that's a rare thing actually amongst drummers. Um, there's so many albums that I could pull out. Obviously this, this um, channel being a big John McGoughlin channel, Mark played with John McGoughlin uh, on a couple of albums. He also um, toured with the great Jan Hammer. So I really feel that Mark's in that lineage. Uh, and I, if he's watching, thanks for getting in touch, Mark. I really did appreciate it. And I hope a little shout out for you for this album and all the stuff you've done, you know, will show my appreciation of you as one of my favourite drummers of all time. So, I've thrown 10 albums at you from the 90s. I hope they will either be ones that you will say, I've got that album, Andy, and it's great, and I love it, and I'm so glad you like it. We'll have that connection, which really seems to be an important thing at the moment with this channel. 
And if you haven't got them, go and check them out. There's 10 there. There's a lot of homework for you Jazz Fusion fans if you don't know this stuff. So I have that's my video. Um, please like and subscribe. And if you really do um, like what I'm doing, um, please pop over to my Patreon. There is a lot more content and a lot more weirder, wilder, wackier content over there than here. And I get nastier on the Patreon. So I'm doing a lot of videos about stuff I don't like. I'm not going to do it here where we're all nice and positive. We don't want to spread negativity. But over on the Patreon, sometimes I can dig, delve deeper into the stuff I'm not so keen on. And that can be a little bit of fun. Anyway, it's all fun, isn't it? That's the whole thing. Music is fun. Music is life. Music is love. I hope, glad for watching and all that bit. And I'm not getting my words right. I'm going to finish there before I really slip up. Thank you very much. Bye.